What's going on guys? How we doing today? It's your guy Mitch Pookie Gutnick, Chef Pookie, Big Boy Tackle. Uh, coming to you today with my very first video on YouTube. Uh, so what do we got going on today? Uh, it's Thanksgiving. Um, I got this GoPro yesterday and started filming today. Unfortunately, uh, by the time I got the GoPro, briskets and ribs were already in the smoker. So uh, got the briskets and the rib in the, in the cooler. Uh, going to my dad's house. I don't really do turkey on Thanksgiving, but uh, we'll do a big reveal of that at some point. Um, and then tomorrow morning, when uh, we pick back up after Thanksgiving Day, we'll uh, be out fishing with Nikki No Time. So hopefully we get some great content. Uh, and hey, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you gotta do. But hey, love you guys, have a good day. Side note, uh, just random thought on my way to my dad's. What's your go-to bagel order at the bagel store? I always get a garlic bagel with butter, not toasted. My bagel store is really good uh, butter. And then I get a large iced coffee, light and sweet, half and half. I can't start my day without a large iced coffee. Um, let me know. Comments below. That's what I get every single time I go to Slim's, the bagel store I go to. All right. Second side note, <clears throat> driving to my dad's right now. Um, do you think people who are in the, the fast lane, the third lane, who are going slow, like know that they're going slow and they're inconveniencing everyone? Because uh, for me at least, uh, I am extremely inconvenienced when someone is going 60. They should be doing at least 70, 75. So, let me know in the comments if you're a slow driver and you go in the third lane. Uh, do you know that you're going slow? Do you know that you're inconveniencing everyone? Because you are. So uh, there's that. All right, bye. So the meat's right there, you know. We, uh, we keep the meats in there overnight. So we'll, we'll trade a few meats in so you don't go everywhere. Shout out to the rest of the crew. Shout out Big Boy, Big Boy, my company. Uh, meats are in there. We're gonna take them out in a little bit. See what they look like. Hopefully, they taste good. Please let them taste good. God, please let them taste good. Guys, here we are. We're getting into the ribs here. You see, I got them in this Arctic cooler. Um, you know, what I do is I keep them in there overnight and there's still warmth coming off of it. Keep them in there with a towel. Oh, it smells good. Dad, come here and smell this. I keep them in there in a towel overnight. Wow. And uh, they, they continue to steam in there and, and you can feel they're, they're still warm in there. So take the towel out. We're going to see what goes on here. Do me a favor, Dad. Hold this tray for me. And when I pick them out of here, they kind of just go up on the tray. Got three ribs in here. One last one. All right, guys, here we go. About to unveil the ribs over here. <laughs> See what they look like for a sec. There's a couple layers of uh, tinfoil on there just so they stay insulated. And we'll break them up in the middle over here. Oh, that looks good right there. Oh, yeah, that's what a rib is supposed to look like. What do you think, Dad? excellent and the question is how it's gonna taste later but we'll see they actually you know what I don't need it I don't need it watch 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 oh yeah second rack looking perfect I usually do look at that they're breaking apart make sure you get all tinfoil off of them but oh yeah now guys when you make ribs the one thing you want to look for when you make ribs is that they kind of, when you pick them up, they kind of have a, a snake-like quality to them. That means they're good. That means they're done. When I pull them out of the smoker, they're almost like jelly-like um, when I pull them out. So that's how you know, you know, you can go by temperature. I go by temperature a lot. Um, I pull these off when they get to about 205, 210. Um, once it reaches that internal temperature, you know they're done. But also you want to feel them out. and. Uh, once they got that that kind of like slinky like texture, you know that they're gonna be good because they're gonna fall apart when you go to eat them. So it's, 
kind of what you're looking for. Oh, look, they're breaking apart even before I open this thing up. This is, this is primo stuff here, guys. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't even pick it up without it breaking. This is just making me feel so much better about the brisket. Look at this, I can't even pick up the ribs. Look, they broke apart. <laughs> Alright guys, um, here we're going to get into the brisket here. I, now, I want to preface this by saying there's going to be two cuts in here. There's going to be a corned beef in there. Ignore the corned beef. I didn't even know that I had the corned beef until about six hours into the cook. So the corned beef might be not so good, but the, the star of the show here is really the brisket. So this little guy right here is the corned beef. We'll see what he looks like first. <clears throat> I don't think this is going to turn out very good, but we'll see. Well, it's plenty of juice coming out of there. That's for damn sure. Oh, well, you know what? The corned beef might have turned out pretty darn good. It looks like the real deal. So um, we'll see. We'll see when I cut into it. All right, guys. Here comes the brisket out of here. The, 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 the king of the show here. It's very juicy in the bottom of the, of the, the pan here. Kind of have to shove it in there, so it might be Go this warm. Dad, ready? Under. You got it? Yeah. Okay. We're good now. So, brisk is going to be a little misshapen because I had to fit it in that cooler last night, but I'm oh. pretty sure that the brisket is going to be pretty good here. I had to put many, many layers of, of tinfoil on here just to make sure that uh, it, 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 didn't, it didn't leak through. The juices stayed in there and it kind of, uh, you know, made sure that the brisk... Oh, ho, 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 ho. I got a peek of it and boy, am I pleased with what this looks like right now. Oh yeah. Hold on one second. Hold on, hold on, I got it. I don't want you to get your hands all nasty. This is a, a muscle that needs to be cooked for a very long time. Yesterday we were cooking it for about 13 hours, woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning to cut this thing. And boy, I mean, you can just, you can see when I pick it up, the thing is juicy. That's no joke. So we'll cut into it later, we'll get into it later um, when more people show up for Thanksgiving, but I think this is going to be good. All right, bye guys. All right guys, so I didn't get a great camera view on uh, the brisket before of, of, you know, kind of explaining the anatomy of a brisket. Wanted to give you a good show of, of, of what the brisket looked like here. Um, so how brisket is, is built up. You have your flat here, which is this side right here. It's your much less fattier side to the, to the meat. And then you have your point over here, which is the fattier meat. But the point also consists of, I don't know if you can see it, it consists of uh, um, a of the flat and the point. The flat kind of goes underneath the point. So when you cut your brisket to go make it into, you know, slices, you slice the flat this way, okay? And then you cut the, the point right across right here, and then you turn the point the other way, and then you cut it against the grain. So the grains go in two different directions. You got the, the flat that goes this way, and then the grain goes this way on the point. So when you cut it, you know, you gotta cut it in half and then turn the, the, the point the other way so you can slice it so you get, you know, nice pull apart pieces. So then, when you're cooking a brisket too, this is where your burnt ends come from. When you're making burnt ends, you can cut them up and then throw them back into the smoker and, and cook them for a couple more hours. So that's the anatomy of a brisket. Just wanted to give you a better view because the camera angle that I had before wasn't great. Hopefully this one turns out a little bit better. Brisket looks beautiful. We'll see what it looks like when we throw it in the oven and slice it up a little later. Thanks guys. Hey guys, so, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to film everything, but uh, here's everything sliced up. There's the brisket, it looks beautiful. There's the ribs, there's the corned beef. We got a spread of other food over here. And we're doing what we're doing. Listen, I'll see you in the morning for fishing. Have a good night, guys.
got going on today, guys. It's uh, December 11th. Uh, we're out here in Montauk today, I'm trying to get on some uh, get on some black for some sea bass and some cod. We're out here on the Viking Star. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get enough footage on the last trip we went on to uh, make a good video, so we're we're continuing on this one. Last video. Uh, Previously in this video, you'll see a little bit of my Thanksgiving cooking and everything like that. But uh, today we got out, uh, Kenny. Kenny, say hello. Yo, yo, yo! And uh, we got Haas inside, and hopefully we get on a, a, a sick bite. So <laughs> stay tuned, and uh, if you if you like the video, like, share, subscribe, do what you got to do. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Beautiful Block Island. <laughs> B-roll, baby. B-roll. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna buy an outhouse is what I'm gonna buy. Yeah. Buy a fucking outhouse. <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit out a lot of swing and misses, Kenny. I, w I really want to know if you if you had taken a, a full count of how many swings and misses I made on that trip last last time. It might have been close to 50 or 60 swings and misses. Uh, that kind of patience. <laughs> <laughs> team feed them. I'm gonna get hats and say team feed them. It's gonna have an empty dinner plate on it. Let's whack them and stack them, boys. These these people drive me insane. The one who hang these people drive me insane. The one who hangs their their rods out before you rear your fish. Oh, that fucking drives me nuts. Let's let's hold our rod in our hand for five minutes for no reason. Yeah, fuck out of here. I just want to feel the tug. The tug is my drug, baby. <laughs> Kenny's got the drug. Somebody's got to put some fish in the bucket for us. <laughs> That's why we bring you, Ken. <laughs> that one will go in. Oh, that barely hooked too. Yo, I need a net! having a good time what kind of time are you having huh Kenny's trying to make us a, a wiggle oh this one's gonna be a real big one nice that's a Bergal isn't it no it's a dog Gouger all by Big Boy Bucktails. Right. Bye. That's a good idea. You made that yourself? Yeah. Right. I sell them. Oh, nice. I'll make you one. Nice. Free of charge. All you have to do is just be a nice person. my alarm to wake up in the morning.
I hear it. No, it's my alarm to wake up for normal work. <laughs> I'm gonna make my opening theme song a bunch of, of Kenny Ooh Ooh's one. Ooh 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 Ooh. Boo who you, Santa? <laughs> Tis the season. <laughs> He's on there. I'm gonna need a net. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what it is, but it's heavy. You know? That's key. Uh, unless it's foul hooked. You got a foul. You got a butt hooked keeper, though. Never mind. Keeper though. Well, that's a good day, man. That'll do. That'll be a limit. Nice. Good shit. Did I just break my rig off? Great. Yeah. Is the hook still in them? Probably. I can retie this. Yeah. For me? Four. You just bleed them for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think they're just fresh. What's going on guys? Filming a little outro for that video. Didn't get one out on the water. Uh, it got a little bit rough on us out there and we uh, kind of hunkered down. I, I slept the way in. Uh, seas got to six, seven foot seas and it was a little bumpy on the way back. Um, so uh, unfortunately, because I'm new to YouTube, I, uh, I'm not consistent with the filming I've got going on. Tried to get enough footage of me catching fish. I did get my limit that day, but between you know getting on a consistent bite and changing out batteries, I didn't change out my batteries and you know film enough. I'll do better in the future, guys. Get more uh, consistent video for you guys. Um, we did go out for sea bass, bergals, cod after that one. I got a decent bergal and a really nice sea bass, uh, but we didn't get on a cons consistent bite like it should be. You know, like it should be lock and load when you get out there, bring up one after another just wasn't good I think the sea bass moved way offshore and you're gonna have to go 60 miles to catch them which stinks but it's the time of year to do what you do to fill up the freezer you know um, got some some blackfish left gonna try to film a video later this week cooking that up try to get up on YouTube um, stay tuned for more videos listen I'm cooking out here I'm playing lacrosse I'm fishing I'm gonna get a, a wide array of, of, of videos out there for you guys so you can kind of get a, a view into you know my life um, so yeah, listen, hey, if you like the video, like, share, subscribe, click those buttons for me because that will help me in terms of growing the channel. 
most importantly, stay happy, people. Smile. Just love you guys. Have a good one.